guys welcome back to another m creator tutorial so today what we're going to be taking a look at is basically a system using file manager it's a plugin uh created by golderion that can basically store um data into a basically a json format so what we can do with that is do a bunch of stuff like there's tons like it's really just a matter of figuring out what you need for your um, your actual script and then you can compile it and put it back into the game uh, however you want. So uh, basically what you're seeing right here is I've copied this house right here and then I've basically pasted it over on this side. Now there was no structure blocks or anything like that used, it was all through commands. And um, I used file manager, I used a little Thing that someone else uh, is actually his name and um, Gold Orion has uh, basically worked on for creating block states and uh, rotation so what I can do from there is I can basically copy things so let's go find uh, something that over here maybe I might be able to copy a few buildings actually if these ones are aligned well looks like they might be aligned well so let's go back here and then we'll just see if we can't use the command that I created. So this is going to be a very advanced tutorial. So what you want to do is, if you're not new to the command system, uh, learn that first and then basically um, take it from there. So I'm just going to uh, set the time today. What was that command for it? <laughs> One sec. Alright, so I apparently wasn't in um, the... Um, I, I guess I didn't create it with com like the uh, cheats. So I must have been in survival when I created the world. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll just use the structure... Structure save. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and save the coordinates. So we want to actually give the file name first. So this is basically fully dependent on whatever name that you want to give it. So for example, uh, we can give it um, Avin U. And then what we want to do is, now you shouldn't use any characters or anything in this name uh, reason being it won't be supported uh, you can use underscores and you can use numbers as well as letters so um, just be really careful with that uh, because it needs to be a file name for the actual structure so then what we're going to do is we're just going to select the coordinates for this block here and then as you can see we can have the size so this is where it gets a little bit more tricky we need to know the size of how many buildings we want to actually copy so uh, easiest way for that is just to kind of go outside of the border and place some blocks so one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and that is on the x axis. So we want 24, and for our height, uh, I think they're all about the same height. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would say about seven. So seven and then what we want is to test the actual size of the front of the building. So on the X axis. So we know that it starts right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I would probably, if we want the porch, then we want eight. So we'll set this to eight, and then we have offset, which is optional, but um, basically what that does is it allows you to offset the coordinates of um, basically where your selection and stuff is. We're just going to leave those zero 
for now. So zero, zero, and zero. And then we can basically save that as our file. So it didn't actually give any confirmation, that's fine. Uh, it didn't tell us because I didn't program that in. Uh, but if we go into our world folder, so if we go to resource packs, open world, open pack folder, and then we'll go back to the run folder, and then go into config, mod, structures, the username, and then you can see that there is a file with avenue on it. So if we open this avenue file, we have a whole bunch of information about the, um, the actual structure. As you can see, there is basically different types of blocks showing up on the list. There is um, grass blocks. Uh, there is a whole bunch of other ones. This one's oak stairs. So you'll basically save it in a ordered list. So the IDs that you're seeing on the side here, uh, basically this consists of one block and we're basically getting the block state. We're saving the block state to the actual thing. This is a string. And then we're saving the rotation, which is a number. And then we're saving if it is waterlogged or not, which is a uh, Boolean, which is true or false. So that does that for all the blocks in the area of where the structure is. So basically the um, 28 or whatever size that we created. So if we go back to our thing, paste the command again, uh, it basically played, basically ran it for uh, 24 times seven times eight. So that would have been our total sized area that we basically saved. So now that we've done that, what we can do is we can go ahead and find a place to actually paste it. So what we, we can do is wherever you basically set the command for the location for that copy, which I think we did it. Actually, I'm not sure where we did it. It might've been on this corner or that corner. I'm not sure, <laughs> tell you the truth. We'll find out. Um, yeah, so what we can do is we can basically place it down over here. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and do structure and load. And then we want the same name, have an U. And then we want to set the coordinates. And then after this, uh, what we have is uh, masks. So basically what mask does is it will, um, I haven't actually tried it, but it should basically uh, avoid replacing any blocks that are um, not air or water or lava. So basically, if there's these grass in the way and stuff like that, it will basically just uh, avoid that and it will just kind of place whatever block that can go between those grass blocks. Uh, we might be able to paste a couple of them depending on how much room that we have. Uh, we can post, paste one over on the beach as well over there by the looks of it. So uh, let's go ahead and just uh, select the grass. And I do think we selected the grass before, so uh, we're going to set this to true. And then what we're going to do is the other option is water logging. So if you want it to water log or not, you can basically en enable it true or false. And you can disable that feature for on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set this one to false. And this will take a couple seconds to load. Actually... What on earth went on here? Okay, that might have been because it was masked. So, I'm not sure if that's... Okay, it did paste some of the stuff, but... Okay, I actually didn't try the masked, masked version before, so we'll just try something else. I uh, will go ahead and select the coordinates here, and it looks like it's um at the same location, so we'll just disable masked, and it should paste. Did I not get the location correctly, maybe? Because this looks like the edge of the house, to, the, to be honest. Um, OK, 
Okay, one sec. Let, let, let me copy uh, that building again, and then I'll see if I can't get that working. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure I know what happened, is I probably selected the wrong corner. Um, you have to make sure that you're on the right corner. So as you can see over here, um, we pasted this part in. This was all flat before, and basically what, what happened was we had our selection a little bit off. So I'm going to remove all this, and what you'll need to do is open up your F3 screen uh, and pick the coordinates for the block on the lowest bottom axis. So what happened was I basically copied this corner right here, uh, this block, and the axis, as you can see, is that's not where the all the lines meet. The lines meet on this axis right here. So what we would want to do is we would want to copy this coordinate for this block right here. So we would set that coordinate and then we would just basically fill out our information for that. So we'll save this as file two. And then what we can do is we can go over back over to this location and we'll go ahead and try that mask, mask thing again. So we'll go ahead and go just actually just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Let's put some grass in here just to make it a little bit more obvious. And then we'll go ahead and we'll go slash structure. Actually, we should be able to just uh, load it from here. And load file two. Sadly, it doesn't have a list of the files that you created. So it's just something that it won't be able to do. You'll have to kind of remember what files you named. Probably best to put them in a text document or something like that if you're on a server. Also, you can just go into the config. True, and then we'll go ahead and just turn that to false. So this will take a couple seconds to load. And as you can see, the masking basically just avoids spawning in where the, uh, the grass is because that's not air, water, or lava. So that's basically that. And we even copied some hay bales. I think there was, yeah, there's some hay bales there, so. Uh, uh, we didn't actually get high enough for the actual structure, so we kind of chopped off the roof, so my calculation was a little bit wrong on the height. Um, actually, the more that I think about it, yeah, it was probably 25. Uh, because the, we were copying the ground as well, so that would have been 24, so 25 would have been the right height. So let's go ahead and just uh, actually run that command again. So we'll go and save file two. And then what we'll do is we'll set the height to 25. And then we'll just give it a couple seconds to load. And then what we can do is we can run that command again. And for file two, we should have our roof on top of this, maybe. Uh, bu 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 um. Okay, maybe we'll set it to false. Did increase the height, didn't I? Oh, that's um twenty. That's twenty four. This should be eight. Okay, so, and then we'll paste it. Coordinates are a little bit finicky because it's not the same color as the, like, the, uh, the, the same color, so it's a little bit hard to see. But we'll basically do that. We should have a roof on top of it. There we go. So that's basically that part. It will just basically paste in the stuff. And as you can see, because I turned it to false uh, during this one right here, Basically what happened is it basically fixed all those little issues with the grass and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's basically it. It's really compact, uh, compact and stuff like that. It will pretty much allow you to design any size. If you wanted to copy this entire village, you technically could, although it would be a very large file size because it'd have to test or basically copy all the blocks in the area. 
and it's a pretty big village for the size of it. So um, obviously, the, the the more uh, blocks that you have, the larger the count for the uh, the longer the list, right? For the more lines, and it will take a little bit more time to load. So if we go back into the mod dev, and then we'll take a look at file two. And if we just kind of scroll down, you can see how many lines there are. There's probably about almost 2,000 lines. So there's about 2,000 blocks, give or take, um, of how many actual area there is being copied and stuff. So that's just um, the blocks that are stored. And then we have some coordinate-based stuff that goes on up here that basically... Um, it's called when it's being loaded so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual script and then we'll actually we'll take a look at the command first and then I'll show you how to build that and then what we can do is we can take a look at the, the procedures all right so the command is just one command there's a save structure and there's a load structure uh, procedure one is for actually loading this or saving the structure from the coordinates this is based on the command arguments and then there is one for loading the structure so we'll take a look at the command first as this will make more sense so we have uh, two literal values uh, this is one is save and then one is load so basically whenever we type structure the command structure it will ask us if we want to save or load after that, what we have is a single word for our file name. And then I've basically just assigned the value for the file name itself to basically name. This is the argument that we'll basically be using in the actual thing to get the, the name for the thing. After that, what I've used is a positioned um, parameter, a block position. This basically allows us to get the coordinates, the direct coordinates of where we're basically selecting. And then we have our size. Uh, numbers. These are just regular number parameters. We can basically set um, how big the structure we're going to be getting. And then we have offset. So we can basically offset the coordinates. Uh, I haven't played around with that too much, but basically what it would allow us to do is um, change the actual location of where things are. I don't know. I threw it in there just for to see what how it happened, but I never actually got around to testing it. So after that, if all these conditions are met, then what we're doing is we're basically saving the, running the procedure for save structure. Uh, the other one is basically the same idea, but it has um, up to the block, posi block par parameter, so the block position, and then we're just basically testing masked and waterlogged. So if it, either one of these are enabled or true or false, then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, basically get those data and use it in the load structure file. So water logging, you can basically disable that by setting it to false uh, if it has water logged. I think this what 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 it will actually do is it will actually just avoid making things water logged uh, if it is already water logged. So it might be a little bit different if it's um, going into water. I'm not sure, I haven't tested that either, but I know that you have the support for water logging as well as uh, the masks, so uh, that's basically that. Uh, to find those blocks, you just basically go ahead, go to literal value, give it a name, save, load, and then you need your actual file name, which is this one down here, and then you just use the single world word one and then set your name uh, for whatever one that you want and then you have your block position and then depending on which one you're using you'll need a few number ones with different names or you're going to need a few uh, logic logical parameters which are for the ones down here so that's basically all it is and then you can basically just put the um, action in and call the procedure which is this block right here pretty simple stuff um, we need to cover this part so we could actually see how all these variables basically get put into actual the procedure. So I'm going to leave this open and then we'll move on to the save procedure. So you will need file manager. Uh, that's the most important thing. I will provide the procedures for this file as well as the load file. Uh, but you will need to do something before you actually import the procedure. 
Uh, currently, at the moment, uh, the object per, ver, local variable, it, if it's a JSON object, it doesn't actually import with the procedure system for some reason. I'm not sure why this would be on file managers and for sure. So we wouldn't be able to actually get all the different uh, variables set up if you imported it directly. So you'll need file manager installed. And then what you want to do is you want to just call it object. And then you want to go ahead and select JSON object and then make that particular local variable before you import your procedure. Once you've done that, uh, then what you can do is you can basically just import it and it should be automatically set up for basically everything that you need. Uh, now, if it isn't, if you're not using the same names as this, now I'll zoom in as far as I can, but basically if you're not using the same names for the commands, then what's going to happen is you're going to have to update the command parameters for size, offset, and your position ones, as well as your command string for your name, which is this one up here. Uh, down below, I believe there isn't anything else that you really need to worry about, but those are the main things that you basically need to set up for the command parameters. Uh, depending if you're basically creating a name or whatever, then you're going to have to change that. The other thing that you'll want to change is basically where it says mod right in this list right here. You want to put your mod namespace. Uh, reason for that is it will not be cross mod compatibility if you use the same folder. So it's important to make sure that you put it under your mod namespace. Everything else though, like after and before that, you can basically leave. Uh, but uh, just make sure to update the mod namespace. Now, if you don't know how to do that, you just go to your workspace, workspace settings, and then it lists your mod namespace right here. I just put it, I left it mod so it was easier to kind of read when I was giving this tutorial. All right, so basically I'll break down what it's doing and then it'll kind of make a little bit more sense of how everything works. So first thing is first what we're doing is we're getting the name of the input from the player from the command. This is just assigning the name parameter to the actual command. Then we're basically going to um, set the file local variable. So we're going to test or basically apply the file name that we just basically stored. And then we're going to put it right here. We're not going to actually use .json because we already have .json. So that's why I didn't add .json to the file name. And then this is basically going to create a file named that. So it's basically going to allow us to use as many files as we want to save and copy and paste. Uh, after what we're doing is we're getting the game direct directory then we're going to target the actual config folder and then our after that what we're going to do is make a folder path for our namespace for our mod and then a structures folder and then we're going to use a display name for the player so we can use um basically save it based all the structures based on that one player. So if they want to make as much structures as they want, it won't interfere with other people's structures. That's why I have the display name at the end there. So once we're done that, what we're doing is we're going to test if the file does not exist. So the reason for that is if we don't test for that and create the file, then it's probably going to crash and there's going to be a really bad time. So we're testing if it doesn't exist. If it does, does not exist, then what we want to do is create the file itself. After which, we're just basically going to test if the file does exist. So it should exist now if this like failed or whatever, like ran. If it failed, then it should already exist. And then we can just move on to the next thing. But if it basically um, does not have the file, then it's going to create it after which uh, we're going to set a block group. So the block group is basically that number in the JSON file. Uh, we'll just open that JSON file again. And you can see this would be the group number. So basically the group or block group, which is number one, that's where we start. And that's the equivalent of the ID right here. This will have to be the same for loading as well. So make sure you set this number to one and basically load it in the same aspect. But if you're importing the actual procedure, you shouldn't have any issues. It should already be set up so you don't really need to test 
like edit that part. Then we're just assigning the size x, y, and z variables to our command parameters for size x, y, and z. And then our offset x, y, and z for our offset x, y, and z parameters. And then lastly, we're setting our, basically our position x, y, and z to our position block parameters for position. So basically this will basically get the um, position name from the block and it'll basically carry it over to our x, y, and z position for those three coordinates. Uh, lastly, there is some math into this system. So there, basically what we're doing is we're going to run the script for if we want to actually change the offset. So what will happen is if we want, if we select a different corner, like in that case that we did and we copied a different area, what we could have done was set the offset a little bit different. So we could have basically taken our coordinates and set our position for X uh, two, which is actually run into the repeater down here. And we would have set our position X, which is what we selected for our coordinates. And then we would have subtracted it by the amount that we wanted to offset. And that would have put it roughly at the coordinates of our um, access point. We could have adjusted it that way as well. So that would have been the offset part. And then what we're doing is we're basically going to save a few different uh, important variables to the file, which can be seen at the top right here. Uh, we have our offset and our position located here. I don't know if these are actually used, they might be, but uh, I'm, I just saved it so it was a little bit easier to kind of figure out where everything was. So after which, uh, what we're doing is we're using three repeaters. We're using our size Z, size X, and size Y. After which, what we're doing is we're going to save a local variable to a block state. So we're getting the block state of x2, xy, or pardon me, position y2 and position z2. So this is basically where we're, we've saved all these coordinates here. And then what we're doing is we're going to basically use that block state across a couple different versions. Uh, this will basically uh, save each line uh, each time this repeater is run. So basically it runs them in the same order. So we have our block state, our direction, and then our water logging. And we're just basically testing, um, we're running it on a number. So we're formatting the number so it doesn't have the point form. And then we're basically just applying the name after it for that uh, object file. And then what we're doing is we're basically just going to convert the block state that we created into a string. Now this is a new block added in file manager. Hopefully it will be merged into the base program. But if you go under file manager, file manager right now, there is a um, basically block state to string and then you can basically apply that. There is also one down below, which is a direction to number, which we also use. These are two new blocks that are added. There's also number, uh, which is to direction. And there is one for, let's see if I can find it, um, string to block state. So basically what you can do is you can convert them back into actual variables. So those are the important ones. Um, outside of that, that's basically what we're doing. We're just testing the block state. This has been added in, I think, last update or something like that. But if you go to the block data, then we can basically test if the block is waterlogged. We can also test for other properties as well, and we can set it up based on those. But um, basically, I've just basically taken the parameter from the block state up here, the block that we're testing, and then we're basically just uh, testing all these other conditions here. So testing for the rotation, testing for if it's waterlogged, and saving it all to those files after which we need to update the block group so it will move on to the next number so basically we're setting the block group and then we're getting the block group and then adding one so that will increase the number by one each time that this repeater is run which will just kind of do a whole area over time and then what we're doing is we're going to increase the y and do the exact same thing and then once this repeater is finished what we need to do is we need to change the coordinates for the or reset the coordinates for the y position so again that we'll be using the y1 right here 
and then what we can do is reset the coordinates to base it on the the next direction the next cycle so it will reset and start over again uh, then what we're doing is we're increasing the watt the x value which will then in sense run this whole procedure again and then it will basically cycle 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 until the x one is finished and then finally what it's doing is it's resetting y and z basically just applying these two two variables right here resetting them and then we're increasing the z position and then after this whole repeater and repeater is done what is happening is we're basically writing to the file which is we're getting the local the uh, object file and then we're basically putting it to the the file itself which is in this order so that's basically how it saves the file now we need to actually look at how it's loaded so this is going to be a little bit longer of a video i am sorry it takes a little bit of long time to explain how everything works but yeah if we um take a look at the actual loading structure it's not too much different what we're doing is just a little bit different for the actual system uh the first thing that we're doing is we're getting the name uh same same exact thing that we're doing from the last procedure for the save one we open up the save one and we can see this is all basically the same and we're doing the same pretty much for this part right here we're not testing if the file exists already because we don't need to create it if it doesn't exist we don't want to actually run the procedure so we're not going to do that um then what we're doing is we're setting the block group now this this number needs to be the same as this number right here if it's not the same then it's going to mismatch the coordinates and it's going to throw everything off after which what we're doing is we're going to read json file and then we're setting the the actual file for our thing now again when you're importing this one you need to make sure that you have the proper like, that you've set up the object file and named the object variable and then basically created that before you import it same thing with the save one because it will not properly import if it's not set up and then you'll be missing the uh, JSON file uh, lists in the JSON file here and all these little things and it's going to be a really pain to set it up you have to delete it again set up the actual variable and then import it again if it's blank then there's going to be an issue all right so basically what we're doing is we're just reading from the file we're setting the offset the actual uh, X Y and Z and then we're basically going ahead and getting the um, actual uh, position down here so all these uh, variables uh, these ones are from the JSON file itself so if we open up the JSON file you can see these are the same names as the ones in the document so we're basically calling these variables and getting those values so that's what this part not this one uh, this part is doing and then what we're doing is we're getting the position of the block uh, same thing that we're doing with the other command and then we're just basically doing that same offset thing so it can kind of stay consistent. So after which, uh, what we can do is we can run the size parameter, uh, which is our size that we've given it. This is uh, loaded in here. And then we're going to do that same repeater trick that we did. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically load the file, uh, get the variables that we saved from the actual document so basically what this is doing is it's going to uh, convert the json property of the text and then we're going to get the value of it and the block state id so basically we're just copying the same thing that we're sending it to so the same name and we're basically just setting it in a system where it will get the id and stuff like that for that line so it's going to do that for all of these lines that we need to basically load and then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and run a couple different command parameters so if the command parameter is masked then what we're going to do is we're going to run this one if it's not masked then we're going to run this one so what happens if it is masked is it's going to test for the a few different uh, material types if it's water lava or air uh, you can add different material types or even specific blocks or even tags if you want to to this list uh, the only thing is it will basically 
allow you to replace those blocks if depending on what ones you do select. So if it's water, air, or lava, then it's going to allow it to override those particular ones. Anything that's not in this thing, like the tall grass that we saw, then what it's going to do is it's going to just basically uh, ignore that and paste around it. So after which, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the block and we're going to set it to our variable that we just loaded the file from. So basically we're getting the, the block state direction and water log from the file. And then we're going to set the block state and rotation based on those two variables here. You might note that we're not keeping the MBT data because the MBT data is going to be removed when you actually import it unless you actually specify to save what MBT data you want to actually save. Sadly, there isn't any way to actually get all the different types of MBT data and figure out how to store it to the file. So it's not really easy to do in that regard, but we can keep the rotation, water logging, and direction, uh, or the block state rotation and water logging. So lastly, what I'm doing is we're going to basically go ahead and we're going to uh, test if the, the block can be waterlogged. Now, this is the same system down here, just without the um, masking part. And what's happening is it's going to set the water log based if it is true or not. So if you want to set it to error, then what you can do is you can basically tell it to uh, basically toggle this on or off and it will paste it just as a regular block. If this is basically false, if it is true, then if the block is waterlogged, then it will basically paste it in as a waterlogged block. And same thing that goes down here. So this is exact same script as this one down here, just without the condition for the, the actual masking. And again, uh, same exact system for repeating the, um, repeat, the repeater system. So we're setting the group name, increasing it by one, setting the y, uh, y axis up by one, resetting the Y on the next level and then we're increasing the x and then on the last level then what we're doing is we're resetting x and y coordinates and then we're also uh, increasing the z coordinate one so that's basically that uh, again i'll provide the procedures so you guys can import it if you want to and uh, just make sure that you set up your um, actual command similar to this or update the names when you do set it and then you can basically update the the names for the ones that are used. So the only ones that are used in this particular one is position for the load and the name. Everything else is called from the document itself. So those are the only ones that you need to actually update here. The, oh, and you will need to update your mod um, namespace for your mod right here in this file name as well, as well as the save procedure. Those are the only changes that you really need to make. So after that, uh, you can basically just save it and then give it a try and it should basically copy things over. Just make sure that you choose the axis or use the offset in order to get the right location for your block. Outside of that, that's all that I have time for. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.